Hello everyone, my name is Desai Jai and I am from team Pusens. I am here to represent how we reverse engineered starter motor HH34 M2J and took it to the production level. The product that we were assigned was this old product. Now this old product was a used product and is not in working state. But as a reverse engineering project includes, we need to disassemble this complete unit and to study how the inner components may have been assembled in an actual production assembly station and then how this inner component works and originally how this starter motor works. So moving forward with that, the very first tag was to disassemble this starter motor. We disassemble the motor in a way that we don't harm or we don't break any of the components although we break one or two snap rings that were required for some of the fastening functions. Now after we dis disassembled the motor, we in clearly uh, cleaned the inner components and then we started studying the components. During the study of the starter motor and its components, we found that there are many internal functions that work within the starter motor itself. Thereafter, moving towards the next stage of dimension analysis, we measured almost every component rather than the uh, uh, outsource components in order to create a CAD model from this component. As said earlier, it is an old product and the manufacturer is now not producing such products and he doesn't have any kind of drawing documents available. So we need to make the dimension analysis and so that we can create a CAD model. Thereafter, when we were disassembling the product, we found many discoveries. For example, the armature shaft had a helical groove. Now what is helical groove for? This helical groove is used to provide a small torque to the pinion clutch assembly so that when that pinion goes for the meshing with the flywheel, it goes a small fraction of turn so that it smoothly meshes with the flywheel. For the same function, the pinion is also given a slight slope cut so that it meshes with the flywheel teeth easily and there is no interference. So that uh, along with this there were many more discoveries and uh, uh, observations that we documented in the report. Moving forward, we made a data sheet for our starter motor. Now what the starter motor data sheet actually communicates? A starter motor data sheet has a list of features that it has and a design specifications like uh, elegance noise design with six pole fret magnets etc etc but what is the basic use of data sheet a data sheet gives an insight of the starter motor so that a buyer can decide whether he wants to buy this particular motor or not or in other words whether this motor suits his needs or not for example here there's a specification of four stator magnets Maybe the buyer needs a six stator magnets, so this is not a thing for him. But maybe for some another buyer, it's a good shot for him. Okay, so let's move forward. After all of these, we move towards the identification of the outsource components. As with every reverse engineering project, uh, there is there are always some outsource components or some readily components that are always purchased from different vendors. The reason for this is that to reduce the manufacturing time inside the factory and to easily bring the components from outside so that the assembly can be speeded up. Now examples of such kind of commercially available components are fasteners, springs, belling elements, o-rings, electrical conductivity etc. To order these components, the purchase department requires a specific document named engineering specification. Now this engineering specification document is a document that lists every specifications of the components that are required to correctly order that component such as dimensions, materials, finish, markings, recommended suppliers, color, electrical conductivity and any comments required to justify the component so that there is no chance of buying a different component rather than the required component because buying a different component incurs a major loss to the company. Moving forward towards the design enhancements task. Now, once uh, after going through this dimension analysis, making a CAD model and identifying the uh, outsourced components, the next step 
was to add a new feature in the product like either we can add something that adds value to the customer or increases its serviceability or reduces the manufacturing time so these things are in the scope of design enhancement that we consider for our starter motor removal of fork lever mechanism along with the complex dome geometry along with adding a bearing and the drain hole the next task was to make the starter motor compact and seal so how we achieve this initially the starter motor was working in this way that the uh, fork lever mechanism pushes the clutch pinion mechanism inside and out in order to get mesh with the flywheel but in our component or in our product we change this thing we change it in a way so that there is no requirement of a fork lever mechanism the whole solenoid casing is then bring in the front now the requirement of this is that now there is no need of an extra casing and the solenoid is in the front of the armature the, there is a plunger which is mounted on the bearing and the bearing is mounted on the sleeve this gives a closer look to the bearing initially there was no bearing but we added a bearing in our product to increase the rolling friction or to provide a rolling friction for a smooth uh, spinning of the pinion now the bearing here used is outer wrist fixed and inner wrist rotating this bearing is mounted on the sleeve and the bearing is coated by a plunger this is the plunger and the bearing will be inside it so the sleeve clutch pinion mechanism bearing and the plunger all these things will be mounted on the sleeve note that this sleeve is different from the armature's shaft so when the in and out motion of the pinion mechanism occurs the armature remains on its own position there is no shifting of the armature but the only shifting here happens is of the sleeve the sleeve is connected with the armature shaft by a running fit so that it doesn't provide much friction when the solenoid is energized and the plunger gets strong due to the magnetization force now saying that as we completely change the casing so this is a new casing no requirement of the complex dome geometry hence no requirement of the complex tie then a solenoid casing and directly connection of the frame no requirement of extra casings or extra fork lever mechanisms to push in push out the pinion clutch mechanism let's move forward as with any design it can be said that it is not always perfect there can be a flow in the initial design stage which should be rectified out otherwise there can be a major flaw when the product is working and there can be a that too so the next stage was to find out the risks that are attached with our new design so we performed a design failure mode and effect analysis when this failure mode and effect analysis is being performed we identify the design functions and potential failure modes its effect and severity how this failure can occur means the causes of failure and its risk analysis studying this and getting an insight of these risks we make we made a mitigation report to mitigate such kind of risks and to reduce its rpn known as risk priority number the goal here was to reduce the rpn number as low as possible so that there is no chance that a major flaw or major obstacle occurs with the starter motor or the starter motor may blow off moving forward this is the dfmea template or the dfmea that we have performed you can see the initial rpn was very high but later after the mitigation of these uh, risks the new rpn value are comparatively very lower what this means is that our motor can be considered as a safe and is laboratory performed and tested and certified that it will not undergo such kind of failures let's move forward cost benefit analysis nothing is ever complete without there is a benefit of it so that we made a cost benefit analysis now what is this done for 
After we made an announcement, we first need to see whether our announcement incurs the cost to the company or it adds value to the manufacturer and the customer. So we find out the direct cost, indirect cost, its implications on the company and the serviceability impact. After analyzing thoroughly the cost benefits, we found that if the company is able to sell 1 lakh starter motor products a year, it will make a 34 million profit. So that the design announcement is good to go. Let's move forward towards the production assembly. As I said, the design announcement is good to go. So this is the production assembly. So production assembly is a station where a worker will assemble our product and then it will finally go for packaging and then for sales. So we design an assembly station design, work cell layout, considering each of the ergonomics aspect as required for our product and the safety considerations. Later we move towards the work instruction stage so that a worker can safely, completely and repeatedly make this assembly without having any kind of fatigue or stress while working on our assembly. This organizing the workflow is a very important thing in our system as the workflow should not hinder the worker from making our product. So this is an insight or a complete assembly station for our product. You can see here's assembly station and there are two trays over here. Now what are these trays for? Let's see. This tray is for components flowing and this tray is for the finished products going towards packaging. It means there are going sales, there are going to be profit. Now, as I said, we performed an ergonomic considerations. We, we have took, took care of the illumination or the overhead light so that there is no eye stress on the worker, work area zone so that everything's are in the working zone of the uh, worker and he doesn't need to move so far from his position, torque gun, table height, etc. All you can see here on the screen that there are pneumatic screwdrivers reducing the fatigue when turning the fasteners at the screen that will run the work instructions video so that the worker may get an insight of how to do the assembly of this product. So then, also there is an addition of cushion tracks, anti-fatigue anti mat and a chairless chair. All this helps us in reducing the worker's fatigue. Let's move forward. Safety first, serviceability second. We need to find out all the safety requirements when anyone is working on our product. We don't want the debt or the loss of our worker on behalf of our profit. So we need to take out some safety considerations such as a worker must be always wearing his personal protective equipments every time he is on the lab or on the floor. You can see here there are uh, a demonstration of what are the safety uh, uh, personal product protective equipments required for our product. Let's move forward towards the work instructions. Work instructions is an instruction or we can say a document that shows step by step how to completely assemble our product. So we made a document of work instructions showing clearly steps as well as a video so that a worker can go through that video and know how to orient the part and how to assemble our product. And all that for today. Thank you so much for being with us. And this is how we completed the reverse engineering of starter motor SH34 M2J. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Fatigue you la, 12 minutes to perfect.